Welcome to another mini video from 2 dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create a knitting pattern using symbols. As usual, there are a lot of ways to approach this problem. I tried a few from painstakingly placing the images to a pattern set to multiply placed on top of the design. To me, using symbols makes the most sense. So I create a rectangle, color it, and create my knitting pattern. This one is a really simplified version of it. I just take another rectangle, round two corners, duplicate and mirror it and create the V shape. I combine the two shapes using the boolean edge. That way I just have one curve. I color that red as well and group it with the rectangle. That way I can create a group that contains both shapes. If you select two shapes and make them a symbol, they both turn into symbols. Turning a group into symbols gives you the two shapes inside the symbol. I hide the pattern and just use the rectangle. I duplicate it, place it next to the original with the snapping on that's easy to do and after that I use the power duplicate to fill the row and then do the same thing copying the row to fill the height of the artboard as well. You end up with quite a few objects. This one has 861 objects on it. I hide the rectangle and display the pattern. The result is a very simplified knit look. I adjust the color of the artboard from gray to a darker red. Before I start coloring individual symbols, I turn the sync off. That way the symbols are no longer synchronized. I can change the attributes of some of them without affecting all of them. Giving those symbols a white fill does not change all the symbols. With the sync on, a change like that would color all symbols white. And here is me again working without a sketch. So I'm just trying to make up a pattern as I go. And while I do that, I did speed up the video. I repeat the same process, select a few symbols, color them in a different shade to make a pattern. Thinking about it, I probably could have used global colors. It would have made changing easier. In case you forget, like I do, there's always the option to select and select same with the fill. That way you can select all white or all green objects and give them a different color. So that is the very simple knit pattern done in Affinity Designer using symbols. As usual, if you add more time and detail, the result will get better. So let's do this again and increase the complexity of the design pattern. Rather than just the simple one, I added a more shaped one. I'll also add a donut and a polygon six-sided slightly rotated and for good measure I add a heart. All these go into the symbol as a symbol within a symbol. I hide all but the detailed knit pattern, group them and group them with the rectangle and then I can create a symbol from this group. I select the group inside the symbol 
and make it a symbol of its own. So I have a symbol inside a symbol, which currently shows the knitted pattern. I hide that and work with the square. I scale it down, duplicate it, create a row, duplicate the row and fill my artboard, just like I did in the first part. When I hide the rectangle and display the symbol, the result is a more realistic looking pattern. I select my symbols for coloring. That's what happens when you don't turn the sink off. Luckily there is the undo. I turn the sink off and color the selected symbols white. Just like with the first part, I repeat the process, select symbols and color them. With little regards to my CPU, I'll add effects to my shapes. An inner bevel will give the shape volume. And now I forgot to turn the sync on. So it's undo until the shape is in sync with the rest again. In the layer panel, you can see a orange line at the very left. If that line is solid, the shape is synced with the rest. Now it's back where it's supposed to be. I turn the sync back on and then make the change. I add an inner bevel to the two shapes. The symbols now have an inner bevel. I also add an outer shadow to give them more contrast from the background. The result is a more realistic looking pattern with some volume. You can fine tune that, you can add more effects, you can add more detail to each of the symbols. Or I can change the whole look by switching to another shape. Let's do the same thing with the simplified version. I add an inner bevel, adjust the radius and the light. I hide that one and turn on the donut. Same thing happens, we now have a donut pattern and I can add volume to that to make it look like one of those pearl craft projects. Remember to turn the scale with object on if you work with a scaled down version of the symbol. Another fun thing to do is play with the curve of the bevel. Let's do the polygon, tilt it a little bit more and scale it down a bit to have more space. When I give the polygon an inner bevel with a straight curve, it turns into a diamond cut. Gives it a very interesting look. Remember to turn the scale with object on. Let's do the heart as the final one. I choose a 3D effect rather than the bevel. Same thing happens, I get a volume for my heart. I could have chosen any other shape to add to my symbol in the beginning. I could make this a crosshatch pattern, but this was all about knitting. So let's go back to that and turn the knit pattern back on. Of course, there is more. Let's add a symbol to the mix and just work on one part. Rather than filling the whole screen, I just fill one quarter. Group that, turn it into a symbol, duplicate, mirror the symbol, duplicate the two and I have a whole screen filled with the pattern again. If I fill without the sync on, 
it will fill all. When I turn the sink off though, it turns it off for everything. The larger panels won't get updated when I make changes to the smaller elements with the sink off. That idea didn't quite work, so I'm working on one quarter. I then use this symbol, duplicate it and mirror it to fill my artboard. Making changes to a symbol now with the sync back on means it'll change all symbols across the design. Once I turn the bevel back on for the two shapes, my whole design has depth again. I turn it off when I create my pattern because every effect you add will make your machine work harder. Keeping it as simple as possible when you do your design, maybe just work with the rectangles might be the fastest option. Save that version, then add the pattern and then add the effects. As always, I had a lot of fun with this little problem. I hope I made it work and explained it to you in a way that you can use. If I did and you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and a comment and let me know what you want to see on this channel and I will see you again soon.